Hello everybody and welcome to the Sam's Report. It has been a hell of a week here uh, for me. Just a lot of travel, a lot of conferencing, a lot of a little bit of everything, a lot of screwing around at home and uh, changing things up because why not? And so, yeah, uh, Microsoft held Ignite this week. I was down there. Hopefully you saw some of the shenanigans that were going on and obviously Microsoft had a lot to announce and I know people tend to think that Build is the, like the big conference of the year, but Ignite honestly might be bigger. Uh, Build is very much developer focused, obviously called Build, and we, they tend to show off some new things there. But for practicality and get, like getting work done and its impact on the world, um, I would probably argue that Ignite is actually a larger event. Um, 20,000 plus people down there a ton of announcements on both Monday and Tuesday. Actually, Ignite is still going on. If you're in Florida, you could potentially be at a session right now. And yeah, uh, it was in Orlando. Actually, Microsoft already announced that it is going to be in Orlando next year, which is actually a good thing. Orlando did a great job. This was a, a great venue for it. There was uh, ample hotel room. Um, even the people who weren't right next to the convention center, no more than like a 10 to 15 minute cab ride, it seemed, uh, for transportation. And for those of you not familiar, at Ignite last year in Atlanta, some people were up to 45 minutes and with traffic an hour away from the convention center. So tons of stuff to do uh, around the area, obviously, of Disney World. You have, uh, what is it, the amusement park. There's SeaWorld. Uh, Universal Studios, which Microsoft actually rented out, I believe, for just about everybody. So there's a lot to do there, it, and it's it's hot. <laughs> that was uh, completely in overbearing at some point, uh, mostly just the humidity, and it gets hot here where I live, but I was just kind of hoping for maybe at this time of the year things would cool down a little bit, but, you know, that's Florida for you. And so I think I think having it in Orlando was a good thing. I, I That's the first time I've ever gone to a conference there, and it was really honestly no big issue so uh good job for microsoft on that one kick it off with some of the big news uh microsoft said in a session that the surface lte is actually coming on december 1st that, that's actually <laughs> all right that's the first time we've actually heard a date we just heard that it was coming this year uh we knew that panos was going to go to uh decoded in uh go to decoded in london and yeah and that, this is what we thought he was going to announce, and here we go. It's coming December 1st, but there's apparently going to be no i7 model. So if you've been holding out for that, you've got to hold out a little bit longer. Actually, quite a bit longer, to be honest, like two months. Yeah, about two months. Two months or so, which kind of makes the question, like, that's that's a long ways after the original launch. I, don't, I, wonder, why, I wonder what took them so long to get that LTE version up and running. I, I, I can't imagine that there's more to the story here, but that's... That's a really long time, so uh, I, I I wish I had some sort of insight about why it took so long, but you know what? Here we are. Other things announced, somewhat surprising, somewhat not surprising. Microsoft actually announced Office 2019 in just about the most ho hum and boring fashion ever, and so this it, this shouldn't be a big surprise now that Microsoft is pushing Office 365, but Office 2019 or 2019 is going to come in the second half of 2018 and early preview will be sometime around mid 2018 and really what they're doing is they take office 365 take a snapshot of all the features of it and then make it digestible in an on-prem form uh, version and there you go you have office 2019 if you're already running office 365 you already have all the features that are coming in 2019 and so several years ago when microsoft would have announced office this would have been a huge event they would have been like they would have done probably their own event for this, or they would have made it a hallmark thing. But because of Office 365, Office 2019 is just like, meh. But I, I, agree, I get it, though. A lot of people still want this version. Not everyone is moving to Office 365. Not everyone plans to do it. And realistically, what this also signals is that on-premises version of Office is going to be around for at least another 10 years. So uh, for those planning purposes, that is actually really good news for everything else. And the company also made it official. Skype for Business is dead-ish. Uh, so what is happening is Skype for Business, just like we all kind of expected, is merging into Teams. And so here we are. What happens to Skype for Business? Well, Microsoft actually said with the Office 2019, they're actually going to release a new version of Skype for Business on-prem server. And so that will come in the second half of 2018. Which means that Skype for Business is not going to be going anywhere quickly, but... 
if you want the latest and greatest features, you're going to be needing to be in Office 365. So uh, a lot of Office news, lots and lots and lots of Office news. And the other thing that Microsoft announced, I shouldn't say the other thing, is there's quite literally tons of it. Uh, Microsoft overhauled off, or Microsoft 365. So Microsoft 365 is basically a bundle of suites and uh, of software and services like Windows 10, uh, some Defender stuff, some security stuff, some Office stuff, just depending on the SKU that you want. Uh, it, it, it's just a simplified subscription. So it's kind of pay once, get a whole bunch of stuff rather than having a whole bunch of different things. They announced two new SKUs of it. So they've got front, or first line workers. I, I I want to call this front line, but first line, which is people who could work at kiosks, uh, who don't really need a full license because they only use it for partial things or very small aspects of the office suite. So first line or outer edge is what some people know them by. And then there's also an education SKU. Uh, the difference between the first line and the education SKU is basically that the education one comes with Minecraft for education as well. And so those will uh, be coming out here soon. Pricing wasn't announced, but as you would expect, call up your local rep and they will be able to hook you up uh, for some delicious monthly fee action, which I know everybody just loves. Everybody just loves monthly fees. And so uh, w one of the main kind of themes that Microsoft talked about or, or kind of behind the scenes that they're pushing is that they now have two primary communication platforms. So they have Outlook, which is email and calendar and that kind of thing. And then they now have Teams and Teams is being received extremely well. I think I want to say that they said it was their fastest growing enterprise product ever. And so Microsoft is now pitching that they have two communication platforms. So they look at Outlook as kind of like a legacy thing. Email is not going away anytime soon. Uh, it'll probably be here for eternity at this point. But uh, they've got email, which they kind of look as the past. And then they've got Teams, which is the future. And so the reason why they look at Teams as the future, and actually, this is a really powerful thing. If you are working in a company or whatever, and you onboard a new employee, and you're, you're trying to get that person up and running and get them brought up to speed and all that stuff, with email, those people then have to forward emails, go find all that information, find the relative meeting minutes or whatever. With Teams, all you do is just add that person to the Teams, and then they can scroll up through the communication channel and find all the relevant content, the discussions, and it doesn't go anywhere. And especially when an employee leaves, if employee X leaves the company, um, you don't really have to go through that. It's like, oh God, can we get IT to go look through their email or whoever to look through their email to find that document? It's just all in Teams. So it really helps with those transitions. And I'm sure Microsoft is going to do a study about how more effective Teams communication is actually a cost benefit uh, for many, many companies. But anyways, so we have these two platforms and I'm sitting in a, in a meeting room with Microsoft and I said, uh, so what about Yammer? Is it dead? And they looked at me like, ah, like, like they've heard that narrative many, many times. <laughs> and they, they didn't want to say, no, it's dead. And they had a, a new vision for Yammer, which means they're pivoting, which means it wasn't really working. And so the way they're looking at it now is that Microsoft Teams is like the intra group. It's looking in on itself type scenario. And that, <laughs> and that Yammer is like an outer, an outer ring. And so I'm sitting in this room and I was like, hey, you just told me you have two primary communication platforms and now you just named a third. And it was just kind of like dead silent. I was like, ah, shit. Um, <laughs> like, did they not realize this or what's going on? But anyways, that's the way they're looking at it is Yammer is the outer ring uh, of communication. So anybody in the company and Teebs is the inner ring. I don't know how much longer Yammer is going to be around. They keep saying over and over and over again that they're committed. But every time that I'm sitting in a room with other people and we, we keep asking ourselves, like, what really is the future of Yammer? That usually means that it's kind of on its way out there. I suspect that they're going to, like, shove it into something else. They'll probably shove it into Teams as some sort of uh, component would be my guess long term. But anyway, so Yammer's technically still here. Uh, they're trying to figure out what to do with it. But um, I... I believe this is accurate, but one of the things that Microsoft actually got in the Yammer acquisition was kind of like the Microsoft Graph idea, which is paying huge dividends for Microsoft. The, the Microsoft Graph is probably the most powerful thing they have right now. And in a nutshell, describe it, the Microsoft Graph, for people who aren't familiar, is a conduit to every other service the company owns. So if I think of it this way, if you're using Outlook, you can use the Microsoft Graph to then connect to SharePoint, connect to Office 365, uh, connect to extract data from LinkedIn, and so it's just one API that gives you access to all information, which is extremely powerful for Microsoft. I have like struggled with this word, guys. I need my coffee or coffee. I don't even drink coffee. I was going to say I need my caffeine. But instead, I've got my water, which doesn't offer much uh, in the way of caffeine. So, yep, there you go. Uh, other things that were kind of, 
I don't know if surprising if you want to say that, but SharePoint is actually doing exceptionally well for Microsoft. I knew that there were fans of SharePoint. I just never realized how um, like aggressive and happy they are right now. Because if you would have gone back five years ago and said, hey, what's the future of SharePoint? You would have been like, ah, th this thing is like really ugly and messy. People would roll their eyes and say, it's like Lotus Notes. It's just a pain in the ass to manage. And so then you come up to today and people freaking love SharePoint, at least the IT pro side, the administrative side. And one of the reasons for that is about five years ago, if you think about it, Microsoft kind of had to put a, they had to, they had to stop almost on-prem development, which is what everyone was using and saying, ah, oh, God, this sucks. And they pivoted to their SharePoint online and they, it took them, I think, two or three years to build that out. And so now SharePoint online actually makes up 65% of all SharePoint seats. And so that's actually amazing for Microsoft. They successfully pivoted SharePoint on-prem to the cloud with 35% remaining on-prem. But they said they now have over 300,000 orgs using SharePoint online. That's up massively from this spring, which was uh, 250,000 orgs now using it. Granted, we don't know what what classifies as using it is like OneDrive sync, like that type of stuff going to count into SharePoint. I don't really know. But Microsoft is going to be the most liberal when it comes to saying how many people are actually using it. But what it really just tells us is that, hey, SharePoint is still massive. Uh, it's a big opportunity for Microsoft. It's really just one of the quiet platforms that doesn't get a lot of love, I should say, from the, the press side. But it makes a ton of money for Microsoft. So it's uh, it's a nice collaborative platform and it's not going anywhere. And other things Microsoft started to show off at Ignite is they're now pitching Windows 10 S for the enterprise, but they're, again, making this really annoyingly and frustratingly confusing. So Microsoft announced a bunch of like low-end hardware that starts at 275 bucks, but I think to get like a decent entry-level PC, it's going to be like 299 or like low 300s. But what these are are devices that they're pitching at the enterprise that are built from like HP and Fujitsu, which is probably Japan, and I think Toshiba and a couple others. It's going to run Windows 10 S for the enterprise. But this kind of begs a, makes a really odd question because it's going to be nested inside of Office 360 or Microsoft 365 is the pitch. So it's like, all right, we got Microsoft 365. We've got a $275 computer. This is how it's going to work in the enterprise. Great. That makes sense. But then in their press release, they said uh, it's Windows 10 Enterprise with S mode. Like it sounds like a Samsung thing, but I don't, what I don't know is if if S mode is like a new feature of enterprise or if it's like Ener Windows 10 S enterprise mode, like they haven't really clarified. I think it's Windows 10 enterprise with S mode, but then is that a new SKU or what is going on here? Um, so I don't know, but anyways, be on the lookout for this kind of stuff because this is coming hot and heavy. I, I actually got a post I got to get up that shows off the office 365 uh, roadmap, which is going to be ex extremely helpful for a lot of people who are managing this type of an environment. But overall, like honest opinion of Ignite, it, it was good. Like Microsoft, I think, put on a pretty good show. Um, their keynotes and stuff were fine. The quantum computing was really, I, I have honestly, I have mixed feelings about this because don't get me wrong, the quantum computing stuff that Microsoft is doing is great. I, I'm not bashing that in any capacity. This is very much a hero looking thing. This is them saying, hey, we're a player in this arena. We are doing stuff, we are investing in it, which we've known they've been doing. I mean, that's nothing too crazy. And they're coming up with a programming language. Um, uh, and it's good, it's neat, it's really out there. Like when they were doing it, it was probably the quietest the crowd had been because they're trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. Um, my only kind of like question about it is, I honestly think this was like the wrong event for Microsoft to do that type of a presentation. Because you gotta remember, the people that were there, the 20 plus thousand people, are the type of people who are salivating over new SharePoint features. They're, they're looking at Office 2019 with uh, um, wide eyes and that kind of stuff. And so to come out and say, hey, here's, uh, here's our quantum computing stuff. I don't, it doesn't feel like it was the right venue. I don't know if they should have done it at somebody else's events, like an uh, actual quantum computing conference, mostly because this stuff is like, nobody had any idea what they're talking about. Um, it, it's neat. And I understand at a conceptual level what they're doing, but to throw this up on stage, it just felt a little out of place, if that makes sense. But anyways, Microsoft is doing quantum computing stuff. And the big question becomes here is what's next? Because Microsoft is really good about putting stuff up on stage and showing how great and wonderful it is. And then all of a sudden it just kind of fades away and never really talks about anything. So, um, yeah, 
anyways, we'll see. I, I'm optimistic, you know, about what Microsoft is trying to do here. I'll be curious to see when it materializes. Basically, the idea for those who haven't watched this yet is you can imagine a, a, a maze, right? And traditional computing would tell you you try each path at the same time, right? It does, it, you know, it, it tries each, it's a brute force attack essentially to solve it. And quantum computing can try every co computation at every sec at every time and actually solve it instantaneously, I guess is the rough example of how it can, it can work. Um, take that with an extreme grain of salt because I'm not the person to be on a podcast explaining quantum computing. <laughs> that I, I understand math and I like math, but uh, that is, that's a little bit beyond, that's theoretical and observational stuff, and that just kind of gets crazy. That just kind of gets crazy. Uh, other things going on, Microsoft pushed out a new build to the Xbox and actually updates the store. So basically, Microsoft is renaming the Windows Store to the Microsoft Store, and they're giving it that fun, pretty little ugly icon. And so just kind of get used to that. Um, other things, Microsoft pushed out another build to the uh, Skip Ahead branch, and actually we're starting to see... Um, we're starting to see Redstone 4, kind of some of the UI stuff. We're starting to see acrylic features on the start menu. Microsoft showed that off or talked about that uh, with the reveal highlight. So that's kind of, it's, if, you, if you know what, let me put it this way. If you know what reveal highlight is without me explaining it, you are the, the, the mecca of insider nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in the best possible way. Really what it is, it's like this little white highlight thing that kind of hides, not hides, but is behind the overlaid or uh, like your hover over uh, like effect. It's kind of hard to explain actually, but it's called the reveal highlight. And so uh, that's coming. I'm also hearing, and I've actually heard from a couple people now that we're going to start seeing some live tile updates as well. I, I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm assuming that we're going to start to see acrylic likely on the live tiles, which is good. Live tiles have not gotten a lot of love lately in the past couple updates. So uh, Microsoft do that, uh, add acrylic. And if you really love me, Microsoft, you'll let me pin a live tile to the desktop. That would be amazing. But for now, we can still only add shortcuts. I don't know why, I still don't know why we can't do that. It was on imagery. It must be some, must be a hard computer science problem. So um, anyways, look for that kind of updates and stuff coming too the start menu uh, other things microsoft announced this week because they didn't have enough is micro <laughs> i love this uh microsoft unveiled a new skype redesign yep you you heard that correctly so they're going to be updating the design of skype for ios they're actually doing insider testing now mostly because the first iteration was a dumpster fire and we all know that, and they've been making some uh, feverish and rapid changes behind the scenes to try to get those. I will say it is better, but they're actually going to be doing some bigger changes. Not like completely overhauling it again like they did, but they're going to fix some of the navigation issues, it looks like. And thank goodness, because it is uh, bad. It, it is getting better. It did have a one-store rating in the App Store for a while. It's up to three stars now, so they're at least trending because there's only a way to go up. But um, yeah, so look for that stuff. Oh, geez, moving on, uh, and you'll see why I'm gonna, talking about this here. So Amazon announced a bunch of new stuff this way, this this way, this week in the ambient computing space. So we've got a new Echo, Echo Plus, like a new uh, uh, little, what is it called? The Echo Spot, that's like a little alarm clock that has Echo built in. There's rumor that Amazon is working on a watch as well. That would actually be kind of interesting. And they updated the classic Echo. I think they're calling it the Echo Plus now. And now they've got a short little stubby one um, for a hundred bucks that kind of looks like a Google Home married to an older Echo. Um, it doesn't look bad, or married to a HomePod, maybe. That would be uh, good. But whatever, uh, they announced they announced some new features for all that stuff. But really, it just shows Amazon's going all in on this because this is their this is their foot in the door of the te the consumer tech space. Like th they're beating Google, they're beating Microsoft, they're beating Apple in this space. And so they're going to run with it. I don't blame them. I think this is the right strategy for them. And this is how they're eventually going to try to take over some of that home computing space. And they're becoming more of a tech company. So good for them. Um, actually, I'm really excited. I'm curious to see some of the new features they announced. Like the, um, I can't even remember. It. But basically, it allows you to link different things together. It's almost like Ift, but for the Echo. But uh, anyways, so this, this brings me back to Microsoft's Invoke. So Microsoft or Harman Kardon's Invoke. This brings me back to Cortana at home. This brings me back to basically Cortana going forward. And I think I finally understand their strategy of what they're going to do for this. They are going to 
position, I, I'm firmly believing this, um, Cortana for the Enterprise. I mean, that that's going to be their space. They were demoing the Invoke in an Enterprise environment. Uh, and what, I, what do I mean by that? That, that this is a, a very honest and kind of different way of thinking about this. Basically, I think Invoke is going to be, or the Cortana is going to be the only path to Office 365. And that doesn't sound very compelling in any capacity, but there's actually some real value to this. And I'll be curious to see if they ever allow Google or Apple or Amazon to do this. But what you can do and what they were showing is that you can now use Cortana, or I'm just going to start saying the Invoke, to set out of offices. You can use the Invoke to uh, reserve a conference room. You can use the Invoke to check your work calendar, which you can't always do. And so anything that's accessible through Office 365 will now be accessible through Cortana, which is actually very powerful for the right demographic. Granted, in my house, that's not always the ne most needed thing, but you can imagine putting Cortana in a conference room and you walk in and then you can tell Cortana to pull up the, the files from your SharePoint or pull up it from your OneDrive or to pull up a document out of your email or to use Skype for Business or Teams to call somebody. And so I, this is my honest thought is that this is how they're going to position this thing and how they hope to make money and how they actually hope to get it uh, out into the real world is going to be through an enterprise pipe. Granted, it will work for the consumer just fine and you'd be able to connect all that stuff, I would assuming at home, but you can imagine how an IT pro could buy one of these things, put it inside the firewall and put it in a conference room and let that ambient computing device control the entire office securely. That being the key word here, securely. So I, th I, I'm the, the more I learn about what Microsoft is doing with this stuff, the more I am firmly believing this is how they're going to try to position this thing. Now, the question becomes, is that the right way to position Cortana? Um, I've talked about it many times. Many people have talked about it many times. Is Microsoft not becoming so much of a consumer company? I mean, granted, the Invoke will work just fine in your home with all the other features, but why would you buy an Invoke just for your home if you're not going to connect it to to Microsoft because uh, Alexa is going to do it. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, the Echo, <laughs> I had to turn mine off. The Echo is going to do it better. Uh, at least right now, I should say. The Echo is going to do it better. Um, Google Home probably does it better. Just from a pure consumer, like I need, hey, check the weather, um, connecting into third-party stuff, uh, smart home scenarios. But from a work perspective, Cortana is going to be a much better solution. So it'll be very, very interesting to see if this is the path that Microsoft goes. And if they if they don't go down that route and really push that, I, then I'm going to be concerned about Cortana. But that is I, that has to be the route they're taking, especially the way that they were positioning um, some of the other AI aspects that they were talking about through Azure being able to tie directly into Cortana. So there you go. I think that's how they're going to actually save Cortana, honestly, if, if I'm being completely candid. Oh, gosh, a little parched. I'm, I'm recovering from Florida. There's a bunch of good questions this week. Wait for the page to load. Oh, man. Let's dive into the reader questions here. As always, you can find those on throt.com slash forum slash Sam's report slash podcast. Actually, if you just go to throt.com slash forums, uh, you'll see a little Sam's report thing. And I put up the, the thread each week. And so let's dive into some of these questions. Da, 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 da. Uh, Tourniquet asks, he says, unlike last year, this year, there weren't any sessions about Windows 10 Mobile at Ignite. We also learned that this week that Verizon version of HP Elite X3 will be released in mid-October, and HP will sell those phones till 2019. The rumors that the an internal HP document says there are plans for Windows 10 Mobile after Feature 2 going further than Redstone 4. Did you learn anything new regarding the future of Windows Mobile at Ignite? So, yes and no. Um, are there mobile plans beyond feature two? Yes, there are. Does the HP Elite X3 support them? I don't know. Um, but there are definitely mobile plans and a mobile strategy in place, and Microsoft has just taken their sweet time, and I know why, but um, I, what, what I cannot say specifically is what the future of the HP Elite X3 is. I don't know that answer because I don't know well enough whether or not Microsoft's mobile plans next we'll call them next gen mobile plans which is like a C shell and uh this windows core i think it's called w core or something like that um what those next gen plans do to the elite x3 that i can't say does microsoft have future mobile ambitions yes are they moving extremely cautiously in that direction yes and are they going to take a huge couple billion dollar risk to get there 
absolutely not. They've already, Microsoft has already spent ten plus billion dollars in this space and lost all, just about all of it, and they're not going to do that again. So, are there Redstone Four mobile plans? Yes, but I, I can't tell you what devices or where they're going at this time. So, uh, that that's that's what I want to be careful in saying because someone's going to go out and buy an Elite XE. X3 and say, Brad, but you said it's going to get Redstone 4. I don't know that for sure. I don't I don't know how they're going to transition from Feature 2 to the next-gen platform. So that's that's what's going on inside of Microsoft. That's a really good question if anybody has the answer to. But um, I, I wouldn't be getting your hopes up for like a new Lumia uh, running this platform and that kind of stuff. Microsoft is trying to, they have to think outside the box because just throwing another phone out there is not going to do anything. Uh, Christopher asks, he says, do you think Microsoft is waiting for Seashell Fluent Design to be ready in order to launch a consumer-facing product like the Microsoft Band or maybe a Surface Phone? Because an awesome hardware is incomplete without excellent software. So I agree. Uh, I got an email, an internal email, a couple, well, maybe it was a year ago. It's that my, They came from Satya Nadella. It says, you can't build great software without great hardware. Or it, it, something, paraphrasing along those lines. So, I believe they want to do stuff in that space, but I don't know how they're going to get there. The band, um, obviously, we all know the story of the band. We all know the story of mobile. Microsoft is just being very careful because they, they tend to lose a lot of money in the consumer space. The Xbox, while it does sell well, isn't uh, they generally sell the hardware at about break-even around the time of launch, sometimes at a loss, and then get it, get it back on licensing royalties. But the, the Xbox is a, is a unique one in the surfaces, but everything else in the consumer space doesn't do all that well from a hardware perspective, not talking software. And so it, it gets they, there's real uncomfortable conversations with Microsoft and an employee or whoever says, hey, we're going to launch another consumer brand new product in a new segment. Um, it has to be a home run now. It is basically the benchmark for, for getting a product out the door anymore. It's not it's not we need something to compete. We need something to win. So there you go. Uh, Easy AB, or, or to answer that question specifically, are they waiting for Seashell and Fluent Design? Fluent Design, I think, doesn't really so much matter. Seashell would make it a little bit easier, but it's the experience is greater than Seashell, per my understanding. It's, it's greater. Uh, Andromeda is kind of converging into Microsoft's modular Windows 10, which... Everybody, I was joking about this on Twitter. There's been some stories about Windows 10 is becoming more modular. Microsoft has been saying that internally since Vista, I think. And with each, iter with each major release, that is true. It becomes a little bit more. And so that this one core, uh, Microsoft, one core was the initiative for a couple of years. Then they moved on to a couple other things. Now they're on like W core or whatever the heck it's called. Um, to, to just keep moving, right? It shouldn't come as a surprise that Microsoft's going to keep building and modularizing Windows 10 to make it more easier to manage and easier to, um, you know, put on different different platforms. So, uh, what is it? EZAB says, with the news earlier, oh, it's kind of a similar question. A lot of people are curious about this. He says, with the news earlier this week about HP continuing to sell the uh, Lead X3 through 2019, would you call this a win-win for the enterprise of Microsoft? So, is it a win-win, I guess? Like, it's not a bad... Th like, this isn't a bad thing for Microsoft that somebody's trying to sell a phone. Um, the only thing that, if you're reading the tea leaves about this, maybe says that... Well, there's two ways to look at it. Either HP is actually selling some of these things, or they they have to sell them that long because that's what their contractual agreements are. So, we don't really know which one is accurate. And I can tell my voice is already starting to... I had no voice yesterday, and it's <laughs> starting to fail. Good thing I don't have another podcast later today. But, uh, yeah. So, following up on his question, he says, if HP refreshed the Elite X3 with a new 835 Plus chip from Qualcomm, could it be the one of the first phones to run the Andromeda Windows Core? Uh, could this be this mystery device? Have you heard anything about this? I haven't heard anything about them refreshing the Elite X3. Um... I, I haven't heard anything that that phone is it's a good phone don't get me wrong like it's pre, it's premium in all aspects but it's also targeted at a different segment I I have not heard anything about them refreshing it um, the interesting thing that's kind of becoming from Qualcomm is I'm curious to see what their arm based computers are going to look like and what I honestly think they're going to do is just try to take an arm based computer and turn it into a mobile form factor so rather than scaling up they're going to be scaling that like laptop type device down is my kind of hunch right now. 
Poncelia says, this week Bill Gates said he used an Android, man, a lot of mobile stuff said, Bill Gates said he used an Android mobile phone. Microsoft has never said Windows Phone is dead. Is Bill Gates the mission really the proximate for announcement? Windows 10 has been dead, guys. Um, I've been saying this for a while. Like, the Bill Gates is no longer using it. Microsoft has said it's den at, uh, <laughs> been dead at feature two. They, they're no longer building their own phones. Like, guys, Microsoft is not going to come out and say Windows 10 Mobile is dead. They're not going to make this announcement. That If you're waiting for them, for Donna to write a post that says Windows 10 Mobile is dead, that's not going to happen. It, they're not going to do it. They're going to skirt around the issue and say, this is the last feature update. It's within our uh, provided guidance for system lifetime, and that's going to be it. Um, but if Bill Gates is no longer using it, and he would be the person who would have the best access to the best stuff coming, yeah, I mean, that, that it, the writing's not even on the wall. The writing is quite literally on Bill Gates's phone. So, Usman asks, he says, did it seem like the Windows team lear has learned their lesson in being trying to be too it ambitious with trying to add features and missing those deadlines? Are they going to be more cautious uh, when they promise future updates? So, I've been hearing from inside the company that, yeah, like they're actually going to try to scale some of this back about their lofty promises until they know they can actually hit a deadline. Uh, Windows time, we, well, we already know all the features. I'm not going to reiterate this, but I actually have heard that there's been some, a little bit of clamping down on making promises that you can't deliver. That's not acceptable. So yes, I, that's what I would hope. And then Jules Wombat says, why should we be excited by SharePoint this year? What were the dramatic improvements announced? Have we heard anything new about the biz talk version? So I'm not the most detailed person with SharePoint. Um, I would <laughs> defer you to somebody like Todd Clint or Shane, uh, Shane, who's a golfing buddy of mine. Realistically, the big thing about SharePoint is that they're announcing new, they announce new integrations. Uh, yeah, Yammer of all things is now coming to SharePoint. There's new online features as well, which it shouldn't be surprising because there's now so many people in SharePoint online, Microsoft made it very clear that they're gonna be rolling out features faster than ever. Actually, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that Microsoft announced a SharePoint conference, but it's not their conference. I actually know who's running it. It's gonna be in Vegas. And so there's been a really interesting thing inside of Microsoft for a while. They, they wanted to have conferences for like each individual thing. There was actually at one point a conference, I think for Internet Explorers called Mix. And then they started con combining and consolidating all these things into like Ignite and Build because they had too many. And so now we hear Microsoft, see Microsoft kind of going backwards a little bit. They've combined all their conferences, basically two major ones or three per year uh, with Build, um, Inspire in like July, time frame and now ignite and now then they announced that there's going to be a sharepoint one i think in the spring <clears throat> because that platform is doing well and it's going to be in vegas but it's not really microsoft's conference i think they're like the big sponsor of the event but they're not actually putting the show on and so yeah so that is going to be coming um realistically what you're seeing is that SharePoint isn't going away. That's kind of the bigger news is that people were kind of worried that Microsoft might be trying to transition away from that platform to like OneDrive. But realistically, they're all being pulled closer together at the end of the day. The end of the day, guys. Oh, man, I need like... <laughs> I don't... I don't, I don't even know. Like my throat is... I need some like honey or something or just not talk for like a week. But um, this week was kind of a crazy one. And so next week should be a little bit more tame. Um, Google's got an event coming out next week, but we think we already know everything that's happening there. Uh, I don't, I'm not really expecting to see much from Apple, although I can tell you iOS 11 has been pretty bad. Um, just a lot of bugs, like in, in big bugs. So I obviously use an Apple Watch for... I just ran the new update. I'll be curious to see if this fixes it. But one of them was that anytime I got a tweet and it would show up on my on my watch, it would actually show the Todoist icon and then the tweet, like that kind of stuff. A lot of UI glitches. Uh, and my favorite one, when I've tried to go to use the camera, I get the little spinny wheel for like 30 seconds, which is always good when you're trying to take a picture of a toddler, or I should say a four-year-old who is a little quick in the feet. Um, Insignificant88 just asked a really good question and I can't believe I forgot to bring this up. If... Microsoft is going to be signing off on Redstone 3. If they haven't done it already, um, my hunch tells me no later than early next week. At least that's the target. Granted, if they find some huge bugs or anything, then they will compile another build that tries to fix that. But um, they are in like deep, 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 deep sign-off mode uh, right now. So be on the lookout for Microsoft celebrating. 
um, I would expect that this is going to RTM here very quickly because it's coming out on the 17th, which is what, three weeks away? What is it even less than that? Less than three weeks away. Yeah, less than three weeks away at this point. And so you got to figure that they need eh, two weeks or so to get it up and ready. And then they got to get it to manufacturing. And so it should be happening absolutely at any time of the day right now. So there we go, guys. Uh, insider tip of the week or <laughs> insider tip of the week, just the podcast tip of the week. So there are tons of sessions from Ignite, tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. There's a lot of information that I wasn't able to get through. I'm going to be going back and watching them. Like quite literally, they, they showed off the Surface LTE, like when it's coming, they said it in a session. So there are tons of little nuggets hidden in all these things that are definitely worth exploring. And it's all going to be available online. So if you didn't get to go to the show or you're curious about some of this stuff, you're definitely going to be able to find out more information about it here in the relatively near future. So uh, with that being said, everybody, I'm going to end the show here. Go check out those sessions once they're up. As always, very much appreciate you tuning in and everybody who came to the meetup. I met a lot of listeners this week and I love it. Um, really great conversations. And the reason why I love those conversations, the same reason I love the questions is you guys have very distinct and dis distinct uh, insights into this stuff that I don't always catch. And so the more eyes on the prize, always the better. As always, everybody, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you right back here next week.